Per usual, having on this channel for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. Let's take a look at candles and candlestick patterns today. First things first, on TradingView, you got to make sure you are on candles. If you're red, green, colorblind, you may want to recolor these. Classically, they are either green and red or hollow and filled in, depending on what you want to think about that as. And just to make sure everybody's on the same page here at the outset, fairly simple to understand a candlestick. Let's take uh, this candle right here. Any unfilled area with a, a line known as the wick, any filled in area known as the body. The bottom wick is the low for this time period, the daily. So during this day, that was the low, that was the high. The day started, let me just zoom in. The day started at this level, ended at this level. If price closes below the open, it's red. If it closes above the open, it's green. So you gotta at least know that much before we go any further on candlesticks. One other thing to note, the difference between crypto and traditional, obviously crypto's 24 seven. So if we go to something like Nvidia or Bitcoin futures, you're gonna see gaps in the price based on market close and market open because there is no market close and market open on crypto, you're not gonna see that. So it does affect some of the patterns slightly, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You'll just notice some very weird stuff happening from time to time in legacy. Uh, we, we'll see specific patterns that you just will never see in crypto land. Just taking yesterday's and today's candle on Nvidia, we gapped up on the open and sold off all the way. So currently the candle's red, and you know you, you kind of don't see that gap because the candle's red <laughs> so it can be confusing at times if you're looking for specific things in different markets just know that most everything applies to both crypto and legacy so we'll start with investopedia because i i just like the resources they have they sort of break everything down if you're wondering why some of these candlestick patterns and candles have weird names or strange phrases for example some of that's due to how they were originated, created 1700s in Japan. So you're going to see some translations. You're going to see names that are different from resource to resource. Uh, but imagine being in the 1700s, discovering technical analysis or candles and candlesticks. That must've been pretty cool and interesting. Um, and again, this is just a quick schematic in case you're completely new. I have no clue what I'm talking about. The left would be a red candle, the right would be a green candle. Uh, so you have your wicks, you have your bodies, open, close, high for the session, low for the session. And that's going to change dramatically from exchange to exchange, as well as from time frame to time frame. And Investopedia has a few more resources. Definitely, if you're interested in reading about some of this, it's good to know that a lot of this exists. But as far as applying it to trading, in my personal experience, a lot of this isn't super reliable, isn't super profitable. We'll put it like that uh, before we go any further. Let me mention today's video sponsor, Kraken Pro. Kraken Pro is a complete overhaul of the Kraken trading experience with a one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to your trading style. You can check out Kraken Pro with the link in the description of this video. And you know, half of the battle of any pattern-based system is just knowing that it exists and knowing what to look for ahead of time because by the time you're identifying this stuff, in backtesting or in hindsight, usually too late. Something else to note that with a lot of this stuff, you may see something on the weekly that will look like uh, a specific candle or a candlestick pattern that may end up being a full blown chart pattern on a lower time frame, And that's totally okay. You know, as long as they're congruent and they're not at odds with each other, you know, that just, makes things even stronger. Candles that I always like, I always remember, uh, are things like a dragonfly and the opposite would be a shooting star, rarely called an inverted dragonfly. These are candles with a tiny body and a long wick. Uh, this just says that, look, during that time frame, there was a ton of activity lower in this case or higher in the shooting candle, shooting star case, and price went all the way back nearly to the open. So in this case, we're rejecting bearishness in a uh, shooting star case, something like this here. You could argue, right, inverted dragonfly. Um, 
for some of these candles and candlestick patterns, the colors matter. You know, that's like a separate intuition thing as far as, okay, this is a bearish dragonfly. This is a bullish, uh, bullish shooting star, right? And then from there, you can get additional patterns. So there's your one candle tip off. You got your two candle patterns and they can go on to like three or four or five. Almost always, the first step is identification. Okay, you got to know what it is and then identify it. The second step would be confirmation. So in most cases, initially, something like a dragonfly, you'll get tipped off like, okay, clearly sellers were rejected hard there, right? This was bought off. Somebody bought the dip. The market bought the dip. So dependent on size and leverage, right, on that close, you can immediately take a position or you can wait until the next candle or you can wait until price exceeds the body of the previous candle in the next session. For example, at 22,450 after this dragonfly, right, you could have added to a position, opened a position, added leverage to a position, whatever it may be. So the easiest to identify are anything with long wicks and tiny bodies, typically for me. Uh, the second easiest would be uh, tweezer top, tweezer bottom which is basically something like this here. And if you're wondering, you know, I'm not going to remember all this. I have no clue what you're talking about. Just wait. I got some crazy alpha at the end of this video that I'll go over. Uh, but this would be a great example of a tweezer bottom. This was COVID where you have an extreme session low that is either bought off or sold off, right? Followed by the next session, which has a similar, but does not exceed the previous low of the last session. Uh, and you get a tweezer. In that instance, these are, you know, subjective, inexact, look great in hindsight, like I said, but it's important to look for this stuff as it's happening. One thing that you'll notice that's easier to identify maybe in traditional markets relative to crypto would be the engulfing patterns. So an engulfing pattern is anything that exceeds the previous candlestick. So in this case here, we'd have a bullish engulfing on this day relative to the previous day. So half of it's just knowing what to look for how to identify it, knowing the language. There are some really great websites that go into deep detail on all these candles and candlesticks. And if you're completely new, it's, it really is worth it just to scroll through these and just look at them. Don't even have to memorize them. Don't even have to know, you know, they just have to be inserted into your subconscious brain chip that, hey, this thing is a thing, right? Uh, that's one website. This is another great website. They have, you know, the mini pictures right there. Uh, the cheat, sheet, cheat sheets are classic. This is probably the best one I've ever found. Back in the day, I used to have a chart pattern cheat sheet just printed out next to my computer on the wall so I <laughs> could could always immediately identify what I was trying to look for. Uh, and that's not a bad idea if you're new to candlesticks and candlestick patterns as well. Most of the time, again, these aren't going to give you a solitary trading signal, okay? Usually this complements trend-based indicators like the cloud, chart patterns, moving averages, that sort of stuff. I don't think I've ever come across anybody who trades solely off of uh, candles and candlesticks, but I'm sure somebody exists out there that does really well with this sort of stuff. I just think it tends to be fairly noisy. And again, this, this stuff like the bearish kicker, bullish kicker, you're not going to see that most of the time on crypto because there's no gaps. So you have to sort of imagine it with your mind, you know, bring that candle up, erase the gap, Bullish abandoned babies and bearish abandoned babies are possible in crypto. They look more like, you know, what they're calling an evening star. But there are some great cheat sheets here. This is from Thomas uh, Bulkowski. He's even got some probabilities on here. I wouldn't take anything for face value. I would just identify it, know it exists, know what to look for. TriStar is a good one. Spinning top is a good one. Spinning top typically means indecision in the market. And like they're sh showing you here in the shaded section, you need a market confirmation. It has a bias. It has a probability attached to it automatically, just as these, uh, they call them long lower shadow, long upper shadow, dragonfly, shooting star, call it whatever you want, as long as you can remember what you're looking at and remember what it signifies. Here's what they're calling a dragonfly, which is no body at all, which is pretty rare and no body, no wick over and over and over again. Also a specific pattern. So it's a lot of stuff if you've never seen any of it and just the last cheat sheet I'll show just to know potentially what you're looking for because at the end of the day, if these are hard to identify and they're not obvious generally, they're probably not going to be too profitable anyway and they're probably going to be noisy. All right, now let's get to the, the super secret alpha. TradingView actually has pattern, chart pattern indicators uh, in the indicator suite. I don't know if you need a pro account to access these, 
you may they may just be a uh, basic but with this first one what i really like is they've got a bajillion of them okay so you can choose which ones to turn on and off you can color it however you want you can detect the trend based on a specific set of metrics they have here and for the new people especially when you hover over the label it tells you exactly why it's labeling what it's labeling and it tells you what it is so that's super helpful for somebody who has no clue what this is and it even labels it bullish or bearish for you so if we go back to bitcoin you can see that on the daily there isn't really too much that it's labeling at least in, in the near term you know when we're sideways there's really not much help most things will give you it's telling you there's a bunch of spinning tops here it's telling you there's, there's dojis here another spinning top down here now it's not going to say that this is a bearish engulfing on july 14th this was the ripple ruling but i would consider that a bearish engulfing because it completely erased the previous day's candle and was red to the downside right uh, it calls this a bearish engulfing because there was i guess a previous uptrend in the, the 50 day moving average and then it calls this a bullish engulfing so again if you're new if you have no clue what you're doing this is a great tool there was another one on there that i liked that just uses words i think these are probably most helpful on the weekly when there's not too too much noise and some of these indicator suites and overlays that people are selling or you'll see places have candlesticks implemented in them for example it'll turn something bearish orange on the candle itself it'll turn something bullish blue whatever it is so if you're completely new if you have no clue you're lost take a cheat sheet take your favorite one you know i like i like this one print it put it on a second monitor make it the background of your desktop whatever helps you right just so you know you're looking at it subconsciously i wouldn't dig too hard into it at least that's for me that worked for me maybe even use these overlays on trading view to help you out and then once you're comfortable identifying them you know, then i would start to implement them into your trading stack your tool belt your buffet of things you know some people don't like candles that's okay there's other stuff you can use lastly i'll just say for me they're definitely most useful at extremes at reversals paired with uh, trading patterns things like that most of the time you're not going to see people labeling each candle and making a trading decision off of that and i'd argue that the easiest candles and patterns to identify for the general public would be what actually people base their trades off of right because if they don't know that it doesn't that it exists it doesn't mean it's not there but it probably means you know most people aren't necessarily trading off of it even though subconsciously it exists so that's all I have for this one let me know what you want to hear more about in the description of this video like dislike comment share subscribe i'll put all the cheat sheets in the description of the video and happy trading